Welcome back to the shop. Today I have something special. It's a two-in-one. Now, the subject of the video is mostly, is Nitro still a viable option for Nitro snowmobiles? And I have two machines today. I have the Nitro snowmobile I've made before. It's not here anymore because it's been sold. But I have this Art Attack snowmobile. Uh, I took it for a spin on the snow and I decided to make a video on it to show you what impressions I had on it, how good is it, how good of a platform it is, because if you decide to change some stuff on it, how good of a frame is it to put some better parts into it. I've installed some parts in these machines before and I've had some success, so how good of a machine that's already kind of hobby grade is going to do with some improved parts, that's what we'll see. All right, first ever try with that machine. I've never tried it before, so let's see what it can do. Clutch is not supposed to be red hot. Gives you a perspective on how much friction it takes to flip the to uh, to spin that track around. Just by hand, it's difficult. It's getting better, but still, by hand, it is difficult. So you can't imagine that little clutch over there trying to spool up. It's full of fuel now. Let's have run number two. It's not meant for deep snow. 
there's a cross on top and it barely makes it across. That's way too stiff. How can how can somebody say this is a good idea? It's way too stiff. I wish I could show it on camera, but ain't no good. It does have a lot of power once it gets going, because the point twenty one is starting to get a decent sized engine for something like that. But the drivetrain is so badly designed that it cannot, it cannot use the engine. It, it, can't, it can't spool up and it burns the clutch and over revs the engine and it ain't no good. It's junk. All right, so here's my two cents about it. The Architect snowmobile is a viable option for a remote control snowmobile, but there's a few challenges that needs to be overcome to actually make it work. First challenge is the track. It is so hard to spin, it's unbelievable. So if I push on it, it doesn't want to spin. And I do put some pressure on it. It barely wants to spin. It's extremely difficult to spin that track. So what I do first thing is get rid of that track and use something decent for it. Right after that, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a whole different beast. But while I'm at it, might as well make a better skid as well because I'm not gonna use this overcomplicated piece of equipment and uh, might as well chop the tunnel, have more space with a longer track maybe. But I think something like a 144 equivalent or something like that because this is an old sled and back in the days, there were no 175 or 163s or something like that. So maybe a 140 or 150 maybe, something like that. So I'm gonna have a look at that. I know the front end is way too large. It's almost as large as it is long. Uh, I, I'm probably gonna keep it this way because this is not a real mountain machine. Probably a bit more complicated if I try to rechange to change everything back. But I think that just with the track, this machine could have a lot of potential, so. All right. Meanwhile, I'm gonna start working on that machine. All right, so as you can see, the test was not the best. Um, what I can see is that the track, the track has been in a position for a long time, so it sorts of holds the shape, but even if I spin it every couple uh, days or even weeks, the track is still way too hard and it holds the shape way too much to be a viable option, or at least that track in particular. If you had some other design or maybe if you just modified the track and had some holes into it, it would be easier to bend. Maybe it's a viable option. But instead of trying to use a track that's already on this, I already have some plans to make it a custom track for it. And in fact, here it is. So it is the widest track I've ever made, just because it can fit, so might as well go the biggest, so you have the most amount of flotation. Uh, it also has the tallest paddles I've ever designed. It's even taller than what I have for that machine, and it's very similar in height to what I have on Dakagon. I want to try new stuff. So you can see the pattern here. It kind of looks like a tractor tire, like a chevron type tire, uh, in a way that Normally on a tractor tire, you want to take the stuff from the middle, like the mud and move it out so you can have some harder ground under it. But in this case, I decided to try the opposite. Um, normally on a snowmobile, what you want to do is you don't want to trench. So you want to build up the snow and make it harder before you shove it out. So you want to compact the snow a little bit and then you shove it out and you move away. So. Uh, I'm not sure if this is gonna work. The theory behind it is that the more the snow has to do some work, the more it propels you forward. The snow has three options. Either it follows the paddle, either it moves away from the paddle, like vertical or down, I guess, if you will, or it spreads out to each side. But um, that would mean that the snow only works in one direction. And yes, some of the snow from the middle moves to the side, 
Again, I have no idea if this is a concept that works, but my theory is all the snow that gets moved out uh, just away from the track is not being used. So if you have a track like this that takes the snow from the side and moves it to the center, it doesn't dig quite as much. And that's the theory. I think the reason why they cannot do that with a standard track is because of the driver holes. So you cannot have an angled paddle. So they're always perpendicular to the track direction. And that's my guess, at least. That's just because they cannot do it. But with this material, I have the option to actually try new stuff. So I'm gonna try it and see how the Chevron type track works. The other theory that I have is that, say, say I flip the track around, uh, it's not gonna be as simple as that, but let's say I flip the track around, instead of getting all the way to the center, maybe it's gonna push against the side snow, so it's gonna make a wider track, I guess, just by pushing against the side. I, I don't know, This it's still a theory, but we'll see, I guess. Now, both machines have a different engine. Project Meteor has a smaller engine compared to this. This has a 3.3, and Project Meteor has a 2.5 cc or 0.15 cubic inch versus 0.21, I guess, around that. There is a difference in displacement, and at this size, it does make a difference. It's also an older engine in the Project Meteor because it came earlier, and perhaps the technology was not as good, so it does make less power. I do think that the 0.21 engine that's inside of this is more than sufficient to do the job of an RC snowmobile. Of course, you can go big bore, but I think that 0.21 is sort of like the minimum requirement to have a nice experience. I would really like to see a two-speed transmission for these things because it takes a little bit of effort to get into some speed. If you only have one speed, you either have very low, low end or it really doesn't go very fast. If it had a two-speed transmission, it would solve these issues because you, have, you can have more low end and more high end. Also, before you ask, a CVT transmission is pretty difficult to do at that size. So I guess that's why it's never been done before. But now I said that this video was going to be a two part video. I never had a really good running video of the Project Meteor, but I just uh, I filmed it a couple of weeks ago and now most of the snow is gone. But I still have that video and I wanted to share. So so enjoy the last video of Project Meteor. I hope you like it and thanks for riding with me. Ah, come on.